Hello everybody, this is MK and I'm back with Unit 2 for Resource Use and Sustainability. Concepts of Sustainable and Unsustainable Resource Use Sustainable resource use meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to do the same. Sustainable resource use occurs when our rate of consumption can continue forever without damaging the environment. To do this, we should try to use renewable resources such as wind and solar energy instead of non-renewable resources such as fossil fuels. Use resources that cause less harm to the environment. Cut back on the amount of natural resources, in particular non-renewable resources, we use by reducing, reusing and recycling. Humans will always need natural resources to live. But when we consume resources, we should keep in mind the needs of future generations. To use natural resources sustainably, we need to rethink which resources we use and how we use them. We should also ask ourselves if we really need to use them in the first place. Sustainable resource use must benefit society, be environmentally sound and of economic value. Unsustainable resource use. Resources are not used evenly around the world. Much of the world's energy use is unsustainable. One day our coal and oil will run out or become too expensive to produce. The burning of fossil fuels in our power stations and motor vehicles is also harming the environment. In much of Africa, trees are cut down unsustainably to provide fuel for cooking and heating. In South Africa, nearly 90% of our energy comes from coal. Here we see three different figures. The one on the left shows conditions for sustainable resource use. How the economic, social and environmental circles must come together to create a sustainable resource use. The one in the middle shows uneven resource use and on the right, world energy use in 2010. Sustainable fishing. The tragedy of the commons is probably at its worst in the oceans as it is almost impossible to monitor who is stripping the oceans of fish. Possible ways to introduce sustainable fishing include Fishing quotas. A fishing quota is the amount of a species of fish that can legally be caught. Suspension. In some places, a total ban on fishing is introduced to allow time for species to recover. Several scientists have called for an end to subsidies paid to deep sea fisheries. In international waters beyond the 200 nautical mile, Exclusive economic zones of coastal countries exist where many fisheries are unregulated and fishing fleets plunder the depths with state-of-the-art technology. Consumer Awareness Sustainable seafood is a movement that has gained momentum as more people become aware of overfishing and environmentally destructive fishing methods. Two organizations that promote public awareness are the South African Sustainable Seafood Initiative, SASI, and Greenpeace. The South African Sustainable Seafood Initiative SASI was initiated by the World Wildlife Fund South Africa in 2004 to inform and educate all participants in the seafood trade, from wholesalers to restauranteurs to seafood lovers. The initiative builds on an earlier project started in KwaZulu-Natal, 
which sought to educate restaurant dealers about the Marine Living Resources Act and other marine conservation issues. Sassy is concerned about overfishing and has produced a card for consumers to check whether the fish they want to buy is endangered. You are encouraged to buy fish in the best choice list. Be careful about buying those on the caution list and have nothing to do with those on the no sale list. Sassy has three main aims. Promote voluntary compliance of the law through education and awareness. Shift consumer demand away from over-exploiting species to more sustainable options. Create awareness around marine conservation issues. Here are the lists for best choice, think twice and don't buy. Greenpeace. Greenpeace exists because this fragile earth deserves a voice. It needs solutions. It needs change. It needs action. Greenpeace is a global organization that tries to make the world ecologically healthier. If the oceans die, we die. The Greenpeace Defending Our Oceans campaign sets out to protect and preserve our oceans, both now and for the future, by setting aside parts of the oceans from exploitation and controllable human pressure, allowing these areas the time they need for recovery and renewal. Sustainable land use for grazing. Human greed for quick profits and ignorance of how to manage land causes overgrazing. This is true of South Africa and many other countries where cattle graze on natural grasslands. It is the duty of our farmers to manage their grazing land sustainably. The objective of grassland management is to provide a good soil cover of edible grass that will ensure long-term sustainable animal production with maximum financial return. Each area needs to be treated according to its own characteristics. But the most important thing to do is to move the cattle quickly between small fenced off areas. This does not allow time for the best grasses to be overgrazed and enables them to regenerate. This is called rotational grazing. Wild animals such as buffalo practice rotational grazing and farmers should follow their example. Buffalo exist in huge herds of up to a thousand. They graze an area for a short time and then move on, only returning to that area much later when the grass has recovered. Cattle are much lazier and will not move to new pastures unless they are forced to. Much of Africa's grazing is on communal land and it is essential that either the number of cattle is reduced considerably or rotational grazing is introduced. The role of consumers, individuals, businesses and governments in choosing more sustainable resource use such as reducing pressure on resources, lowering carbon footprint. An environmentally sustainable society meets its needs and those of future generations without damaging or reducing the resources that supply these needs. What you can do to live a sustainable life, reduce, reuse and recycle are the three R's of waste management. The pressure on diminishing resources can be reduced by everyone trying to reduce, reuse and recycle. Carbon footprint. 
A carbon footprint is a measure of the effect our activities have on the environment, in particular climate change. It relates to the amount of greenhouse gases produced in our day-to-day -day lives by burning fossil fuels for electricity, heating and transportation. The carbon footprint is a measurement of all greenhouse gases we produce and is described in units of tons or kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent. By reducing our carbon footprint, we can reduce pressure on resources. Tips on reducing your carbon footprint. Turn things off when they are not being used, for example, lights, smart TV or computer. Fill the kettle with only as much water as you need. Do your weekly shopping in a single trip. Hang out the washing to dry rather than tumble drying it. And fit energy saving light bulbs. What businesses can do to reduce their carbon footprint and save resources. Minimize paper waste by printing only what needs to be printed. Maximize the use of email. Recycle. While it is possible to minimize paper usage, it may not be possible to eliminate paper altogether. Paper, cardboard and e-waste should be taken for recycling. Use environmentally friendly cleaning products and use as little electricity as possible. What the government can do to encourage sustainable resource use. National and local government can make an impact on sustainable resource use by passing laws and encouraging citizens to lower their carbon footprints and to use fewer resources. The City of Los Angeles, USA, manages a recycling program that collects over 240 tons of recyclable waste every year. In South Africa, the government passed a law banning the distribution of free plastic bags at shops in an attempt to reduce the amount of plastic waste that litters the countryside. Thank you again for watching and most importantly learning. This is MK's class signing out.